But whenever you're ready, Tim, we can go ahead and hit record and get into it. We always have this pre-show banter, and I sometimes know, right? it, sometimes if it's good, I will leave the a, a, a piece of the pre-show banter in as a cold open. <laughs> well, this one actually, that, that, none of that banter actually ties in at all to what no. uh, the, the topics are tonight. No, I don't think I'll cold open this one, but... Um... All right, let's uh let me hit the intro. Welcome, everyone, to episode 22 of the MGTOWN Podcast, your only weekly source for naked push-ups. As always, I'm producer Tim, and joining me is the mayor of MGTOWN, Drexel. Say hi. What is up to everybody, and a special thanks to uh, Nick Riccata of Riccata Law for uh, helping push us over to 5,000 subs. Uh, great milestone, and we're already headed into 5,500 subs, so... Great milestone, and I uh, appreciate everybody for their support and their, you know, their, all their clicks, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that. And uh, yeah, we we always want to bring you guys new stuff and uh, different kind of guests and different kind of uh, perspectives on things because it's become a crazy world, and there's there's been so little uh, spaces for men uh, or masculine presenting transgender lesbians to um, to kind of really go to and and see the world for how it really is and to also learn some things and to, you know, share stories with other guys. That's why I, I usually tell you guys, if you want to leave comments in the comments section about, you know, something that you've experienced that relates to that particular videos uh, topic, uh, definitely feel free to, because tonight is, um, is something that uh, I really thought up as I was going through the whole episode. If you guys saw me on Rakeda Law, you saw that my jaw went became the size of fucking like five grapefruits. And so what we're going to talk about today is uh, a lot of things that just pertain to health. And, you know, there's there's, you know, there's lifting channels and stuff like that. But just a lot of the different uh, the different facets of health. And I think it's very important because a lot of guys, man, it's it's a major thing. You know, I mean, health is major for all of us, but. I was just inspired by it because, you know, as you guys know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, we lost DMX, you know, we lost a rapper, Black Rob, Shock G of Digital Underground. Like these are guys I grew up listening to and to see people just start dropping one after another, all under 60. Well, you know, way too early, especially with black men. You see this uh, very common, um, you know, obviously something that with DMX's case, the mental health also, you know, didn't help. but you, you kind of see these things and it just kind of made me take a step back and be like, man, damn, like it's, it's a lot of death. So, you know, uh, I wanted to just kind of open with, um, with what happened to a, a coworker of mine, a uh, young guy. I remember when he first came in and I'm sitting there talking to him and this is years ago. This would have been about oh, maybe eight, nine years ago, a good while back. And we're sitting there talking, and he was smoking, right? He's a young kid. This kid barely out of high school, or high school, maybe college age. Young guy, he's smoking. I'm like, yo, man, you can't be doing that, man. I'm, so I'm sitting there telling him because we, you know, we worked with an older gentleman who had put in insane amount of years with the company. You know, when got those 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 lifers, right? Those guys putting in, you know, 40 years with, with the same company. That's a dying breed. It really is. People are just jumping up. They're jumping up over here, over there. No one's kind of staying in one place anymore. And I told him, I said, look, man, you know, you got to watch this health. I remember telling him, I kid you not, I was telling him this way back then, right? That older guy who I was telling him, because all he was doing, he would chain smoke and drink coffee. And we were working, this is in the middle of the summer, Right. So I'm looking like, dude, you don't ever eat. I don't really see you drink water. Like, God damn, just, I mean, and you're a heavy beer drinker. Like, dude, and, and so, of course, you know, he's an older guy. He's, you know, he's headstrong or hard-headed, you know. So he's thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be fine. I don't need to hear any health advice or stuff, blah, blah, blah. Well, that dude ended up getting cancer, man. And 
he ended up passing. He 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 got cancer, came back, worked a little bit. I was kind of like, oh, and he he had, he got scared straight. He was chewing gum. He said he was done smoking, and it didn't take long. It was within months. He was gone, and just like that, Thanos snap, poof, gone. And you know, you fast forward to here we are right now, twenty twenty one. I bump into this guy, um, the same young guy there. Now he's, you know, he's eight, nine years older. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what's up, man? And, you know, obviously I would never dox the dude. But when when he said uh, he had done, he had gone to uh, rehab, right? He had fresh out of rehab. I was like, damn, really? And we just kind of had like a, a little talk, man. Because he's like, yeah, you were one of the only people that was always saying, man, don't smoke. Don't, you know, you cut the drinking shit and this, that, and the other and the partying and all that stuff and the, and the fake friends around you that are always um, instigating and encouraging you to, to do this kind of uh, this kind of behavior, right? So it was just nice to hear from a young dude who's figuring out like, yo, man, don't go down that path because, you know, the, the health that you have, it's like, it can deteriorate so quickly. And a lot of times you'll see these young guys that get, they get kind of stuck in like a, in a habit, right? They get to that point where they go, you know what? I've always smoked, or I've always drank, or I always do do a little little nose candy, whatever whatever their little their vice is, right? And before you know it, man, your body, yes, it, it does adapt, you know, and that's why, of course, like you know, you deal with heroin addicts. A lot of times, the reason why heroin addicts die is because when they try to go get clean and they're sober for a while, they come they come back to the same dosage that they were on before, and it kills them because you know you had built up a tolerance, so now their body, of course. Now it's different. And I just look at all the things that inspired me to to do this show tonight about, um, you know, what I believe was a a bug bite of some kind. Um, And, you know, my face blows up. You know, there it is. I'm, you know, I'm aching. My face is all messed up. And, you know, I got to give an extra shout out again to Lady Rackets and Mama Vic uh, because, you know, uh, you know, Guys like me get accused of being like a misogynist and stuff, which of course isn't true. But one of the things I, I really do appreciate about women and their nagging is that regardless of what the reason is, women's nagging does have a a um it does have a purpose because I want you to think about all the guys out there. Every time you you went to the hospital, wasn't it because some female in your life was nagging you? It was your mom. It was your girlfriend. It was your wife. She was, yeah, 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 yeah. You just, you, you couldn't take it anymore, and you couldn't take them being hysterical. Doctor Mom's a real thing. Now, oh, don't get me wrong. Doctor Mom is not a medical expert. Like, if there's something weird going on, the first person I call is my mother, because why not? She's 54 years old. She's been around the block a couple of times. Oh yeah, they've, they've seen enough. She things. goes, "Oh yeah, this thing is this thing, and that thing's probably that thing, and you know, this is not that. This is nothing to worry about. It just means you're getting older, yeah. right?" And she's yeah. like, "Well, no, it shouldn't do that. Maybe you should go talk to a doctor." And it's like, "Okay," and you take that as the totality of information, right? Yeah. It, and moms just have a way. Like I said, moms have a way of doing it. Obviously, Arrakis is a mom. I'm a Vic is a mom, and. You know, later Atkins is being all hysterical. And of course, you know, Nick rushes down like, what is going on? But it's like, at the end of the day, her constantly, you know, there's me being like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And he's like, no, you really need to go to the doctor. And of course, you know, it was a damn infection. They gave me steroids for, for the swelling in my jaw. They gave me antibiotics for the, for the infection and stuff. And of course, within like three days, I, I look you know, 5,000% better because if anyone saw me on that last stream, I got, I looked like uh, the chin of Needham from Stunt Dogs way back in the day. Oh, I put a picture in a premium chat there. Uh, <laughs> Pixlexia drew your chin was the size of a planet, you know, just that, which means just a little bit smaller than Nick's nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she showed me that. But but it's wild, man. It 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 happens that quick where you know you we a lot of times we self diagnose. We just say. You know, it's it's nothing, man. It's I'm good, and and uh, you know, I think back to my best friend growing up. He lost his dad like that. You know, doctors didn't take things seriously, and it was is always about health. You look at a lot of people uh, when when they when they fall, man, and it's health. I, I mean, you think about it. Like most people, when, when you hear someone is is dying in their you know you know 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s. You, you kind of look at the reasons, and usually it's something that could have been prevented, right? 
it was, you know, it was this kind of cancer. There was this issue that led to this other issue. You know, there's guys out there right now that are walking with a limp and walking with a limp and walking with a limp. And next thing you know, oh, yeah, I think it's this. Oh, no, man, you need a hip replacement. And by the time they get that <laughs> replaced, they're like, dude, it's it, we can only save so much because you've worn it down. Like, why didn't you come in sooner? Well, that's why you need to have uh, that woman uh, in your life, whether, like I said, whether it's your sister, your the mom, your girlfriend, wife, whatever. You even a female coworker. There's something about women and they're nagging, you know, and they're just they can't nag, 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 nag. It's like, ugh. Whereas guys, we you should see get you limping. that checked out. You should get it checked. And you're just like, ugh. You just fucking no, no, no. You need to get it checked. No, no, no. We need to set up an appointment. Hey, get out your phone. You need, it's just like, <laughs> ugh. But like at the same time, that's the kind of stuff that saves your life. It's also, it's also. um Well, I mean, you you remember what I. You remember we had to call Brawley in for uh, emergency replacement because I just about bit it for no reason. Yeah. The only thing that saved my life there is because I can recognize the symptoms of hypoxia being a mountain climber. Otherwise, I would have just gone to sleep that night. Yeah, and it's the last sleep you would have had, too. Yep. Um, but I was like, wait a second. No, the, this is an oxygen-deprived brain. This isn't normal. I'm only at 1,000 meters above sea level. Yep. But but think about think about what ha- think about the danger that we face that we that that we self impose by self diagnosing right and you know, ignoring problems or you know minimizing them and just kind of be like eh, yeah you know it's it's whatever and I did that with my appendix and then of course it was um, uh, this girl I knew who was no you just have to you have to go promise me you're gonna go in so of course I went in yeah it was it was appendicitis that they had to do an emergency surgery so. I mean, shout out to all the ladies out there who nag uh, and nag the men and boys in their life to go get checked. Um, I know that we are we we look annoyed because we are annoyed, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ladies out there that are literally saving dudes' lives just by nagging. So, shout out to all those ladies. But uh, the, the thing that's a slippery slope. How many men have they killed with their nagging? Well, of course, <laughs> you know, life begins. I still have life my appendix, ends. by the way, and my tonsils. God damn. I managed to make Dude. it through life without getting either one removed. And Yeah, I got tonsils. Got the tonsils, lost the appendix. It's, um, yeah, definitely shout out to Miss Leximus. I'm sure she's she's keeping Mr. Leximus uh, uh, nagged, uh, nagged up for sure. But the, the thing about health uh, that I wrote down on here is that, you know, there are many facets, obviously, right? You know, you have, you know, your, your psychological health, your financial health, your spiritual health, you know, and even the health of your nation, right? And it is the, the health of the nation that uh, I was talking to Nick about when I was over there. We, we, we sat back, and this is before, I believe, it was a, I believe it was for our first show. And, you know, it's an article that's about two weeks old now, but, you know, straight out of China, right? Closure of online feminist groups in China sparks call for women to, quote unquote, stick together. So I want you guys to think about that for a second. Here we have a nation that realizes, listen, you can be a you know military superpower. You can you can have all this money, you know, all that, but if your birth rate goes to shit, guess what happens? You're done. See, the health of your nation. And I, listen, people can say what they want about China, but I mean, at least they're recognizing a problem and actively trying to do something about it. So here they are. Now, I'm reading the article. This is from Reuters. And it says, you know, several Chinese feminist channels on Dubon, a popular social networking forum in China, were abruptly shut this week, triggering online anger and, of course, prompting calls for women to stick together, blah, 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 right? And they closed at least eight of them. And do you know what the whole reason for this is? To up their fertility. See? The nation's health, you, dude. You have to do a health check, okay? Like, you you look at the health checks that are that are in place, right? Like, you know, you think about you know you guys out there who are you know working in whatever field. Usually, most people go in for uh, a physical, a checkup once a year. Some some people do it two, twice a year, right? And they just want to check, you know, check your blood pressure, check your your you know your levels on this, the levels on that. How are you feeling? Have, you know, have, have you changed something with your diet or something? There's a reason for that. There's a reason to do these checkups. 
Because if you don't, if you like you just said, Tim, if you go to sleep that night, what if you didn't know that? What if you weren't a, a big mountain climber? You didn't know. That? You would have been fucking dead, bro. I mean, so I, I actually, Brawley probably is the one. Brawley was the uh, woman in this case because I hopped <laughs> onto Discord. Well, because I couldn't breathe, right? I was channeling my inner George Floyd. Um, but I was like, wait a second, I'm going to jump, jump into a Discord chat with Brawley and a couple of other people in Nick's Discord and just see, like, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them what's going on and see if they think <laughs> see it's if they real. think the same thing, right? And Brawley's yeah. like, "Promise me you're going to go to the hospital." I'm like, "Ah, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna call the ambulance." <laughs> yeah, it's but you need it. Like, like you need. Like I said, it is, it obviously it's, it's normally a woman, but sometimes it could be a guy. But like, you need someone in your ear that that really does care because. You think about how many people that you lose in a lifetime, man, and you'll be like, damn, man, they, that person could have been saved. And in even nations, I mean, think about it. And that's the reason why I, I said the the uh, the health of your nation, because nations have fallen because they didn't care about the health of their nation, right? They were caring more about, you know, maybe this politician getting rich or this pol political party getting all the power or whatever and neglecting other. It, it's kind of like what, what what people do with their body, right? They go like this. Well, I'm a doctor and I make a lot of money, but I eat a shit diet because I have to work a lot more hours to make more money. Yeah, and then what happens? Next thing you know, oh shit, my heart. I got it's tight. My chest is tight. See, you you were you were so focused on one uh area of your health, which is in this case financial health, you neglected the other. Whereas you look at what China's doing to combat feminism, it's to increase that birth rate so that you can replace the people who are dying off now for the health of your nation the longevity of your nation. Now, we can we all know what to do, right? We can contrast that with the West where the birth rates went in the complete fucking shitter, right? It's over. Birth rates, marriage rates, all that. But to me, the worst offense of the West is it's the culture, right? Health health is, you know, culture is a part of your health, right? Your you know, in terms of your nation, right? Your national health. Your culture does matter because when, when slut walks are okay, when Desmond is amazing is okay, when you have prosecutors like that snake out in uh, Nebraska uh, who is defending a pedophile, when that's okay, we have a problem. When we have, you know, people don't understand why this is such a big deal, right? They're kind of like, well, Drax, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's just progressive or it's this, it's that. It's like, no, man. It permeates every part of the culture. So we as a nation, we've become sick. You understand? We become sick. And we lost sight of what, what makes us well. Like there was a time when, I mean, think about this for a second, Tim. You and I, every, everyone in the manosphere really, has talked about the fact that women have become more miserable now than at any point in recorded history, right? They're popping pills. They're eating themselves. There's all kinds of horrible shit, right? And someone goes, what is that? The culture has become so toxic. And we know well, who's to blame for that. It's become so toxic that people were chasing things that didn't really matter. Oh, it, it, is it really that cool that, you know, your, your, your name is Candace Bushnell and you made sex in the city and you led all these women astray, right? Women and young girls, you led them astray with a lie, right? So then all of a sudden you wake up one day and then where, where are you at? Oh, shit. I'm, I'm in my 60s. I, I got no kids. I got All your dating options are gone. That's over. And it's going to be a long ride till you're dead. A lot of these people, you know, they don't die to their, you know, especially with women, especially women with money. They may not die to their 85, 90, 95. And you spent all that time alone. Whereas had you done what was your biological imperative guess what you could have been healthier because that's who lives the longest we all know that women who are you know maternal you know, those maternal uh figures seem to have the best health right they live longer they're happier they're not popping pills because they're about to go crazy and they, they feel like they want to slip their wrist there's a reason for that but when your culture is dictating all these things it's dictating your health uh, mental and spiritual health, there's a problem. And 
I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Miss Leximus because, you know, the way I see it, I, I like to go back to them because, you know, it was very eye opening. Uh, I think for a lot of people to see, you know, how they respond to the outside forces, right? Who are trying to undermine the health of their relationship. And your relationship is part of your your mental health. You see what I'm saying? If, if you ask somebody, all right, man, are, are you married? Are you dating someone? And they say, yeah, I'm, I'm dating somebody. Well, when the relationship suffers, usually, if you notice, as that relationship suffers, so too does other aspects of that person's life, you know? You're at you're at work. You seem a little disconnected. You seem a little, you know, you're you're, you're antsy. You're anxious. Someone's kind of like, what the hell, man? You you've been off, and then that's usually when someone confesses. Yeah, man, I've been I've been having problems, and it's all interconnected. You see what I'm saying? And the fact that we have people out here that once again, like I said, as a culture, who have become so sick that they want to endanger the health of others by, Psst, Mr. Lexmas ain't shit. Psst, hey, you, you should you should ride the carousel, Miss Lexmas. See, these are the demonic forces, the sickness, the virus. And, and you think about it, though. The reason why, you know, shout out to Coach Greg Adams for always saying, you know, feminism is cancer, right? I think he says that for a reason because when you start to really think about it, women due to their, their uh, in-group preference and hive mind, they tend to go toward what the collective says. So that's why, you know, I have seen, uh, you know, young woman after young woman rush into college to go chase a useless degree just because that's what's expected of them. Not because that's what they want. Because if you start telling a guy, if you told every guy, just go into STEM, he's like, well, th- I'm not good at that. That's not, like, you couldn't convince dudes to just go into something that they don't feel passionate about at all. It doesn't really happen. And yet I keep seeing these kinds of things. And it's like the health of people's relationships, that shit matters, man. And that's why I give a shout out to, to Mr. And Miss Lex, because at the end of the day, it does matter that you guys, it's, it's, it's kind of like doing a physical, right? Every time that they, they sit down and have a talk, that's like taking a physical. It's like, it's like a heat check for your relationship because these people, and Lex knows this uh, better than most, these people aren't your fucking friends, man. These people who are out here trying to undermine your relationship and, and slide in your girl's DMs, these guys aren't your friends. See? They're sick. You know, you know that, that term gets used, you know, especially back in the day, they would say that to describe like, you know, pedos and stuff like that. They would say, yo, man, he's sick. That person's sick. It truly is a sickness. It's a sickness. This isn't normal behavior. This isn't a normal way that you think. And you look at the way that the culture has degenerated. And also, I want you guys to think about something. Look at the, look at the entitlement, right? You look at, you know, there, there's lots of ways for people to be sick. You think about the the level of entitlement that we see now going on with a lot of people out here. And, you know, they feel like they deserve everything and don't want to work. Well, guess what? What does that lead to? What, what is that mentality based upon? Obviously, communism, right? So you have a bunch of people who are lazy, don't want to do shit, but claim that they're, you know, they're, they're the, the, you know, perpetual victims, right? They're career, career victims, right? So... Mm-hmm. I I was sitting there looking. um, J Love uh, sent me a video this morning, and it was actually sent to her by a guy. And it's actually a much older video. It came out last year. Uh, It was a Kevin Samuels video, right? And I I find it so funny because I'm sitting there looking at at this video. I remember when it came out, and there were a lot of people who who made comments about Kevin Samuels because, of course, you know, people are like, "Ah, he's gay. Why did he ask this guy that question?" But he had there was a he had a male caller call in, right? Because, you know, people always, you know, criticize Kevin Samuels. And I said, look, he has the heat for the, the the males and the females that call in. So, you know, they can't say he doesn't give the guys heat either. Well, a guy calls in, 20-year-old dude, right? He calls in. And he basically is saying to Kevin Samuels, like, oh, yo, you know, girl should have to chase me and blah, blah, blah. And Kevin Samuels like, okay, well, if you're supposed to be that guy, he said, okay, well, tell me about yourself. He goes, he said, one to rate yourself. First of all, how tall are you? The guy goes, 5'10". He goes, okay, 5'10". He goes, how much do you weigh? Now, he said 5'10", quick. But when it came to weight, it was, uh, uh, he's sitting there. So Kevin goes, to what? (laughs) And so it kind of goes to show you. Because when people start stammering and stuttering, you know there's something they're embarrassed about, right? 
So he says that he's 285, right? So Kevin Samuels goes, oh, so you're a fat fucker, right? And he's like, well, because, yeah, you know, people try to make the excuse and stuff, you know, whatever it is, what it is. So then he asks him, how much money do you make? And he says, I make about roughly $400 every two weeks. And he's like, so 800 bucks a month. He goes, you don't even make 10,000 a year. See, and there are people who don't understand why this is a big deal. But then he ends up, Kevin Samuels asked him a final question. He says, do you have a big dick? And of course, a lot of people took offense to him saying that because, you know, why would a man ask that? And he was going, oh, I'm above average. And of course, they had this, this interplay back and forth. But eventually, Kevin Samuels just said, you just you don't have a big dick there because a guy who has a big dick knows he has a big dick. And he made Kevin Samuels made this point for a reason. And some people thought it was to humiliate this guy, but you have to be harsh when someone is coming around feeling entitled because this is what allows them to break the mold and get healthy. And do you know how you get healthy? You get healthy mentally first. You see what I'm saying? Get to change your mentality. So I want you guys to think about this for a second. You can't change your height. If you're 5'10, you're 5'10. If you're 6'10, you're 6'10. But when someone says I'm 5'10, 285 at 20 years old, man, that, that you are a fat fucker, okay? And that's okay as long as you change it. You see what I'm saying? So when he talks about the money, dude, you got to do better, right? And, and, and then, of course, the dick, because he, he, uh, Kevin Samuel's point was this. If you don't have, okay, if you're 5'10, 285 pounds, and you don't make any money, he goes, if you don't even have a, uh, if you're not King Dingaling, right? Guess what? Women have no, they have no, no use for you. You are completely unviable as a relationship partner or even a fuck buddy. See? And my thing was, you have to be viable to the opposite sex, right? If that's what you seek. Because remember, if a, if a guy calls in saying, I want to get women and blah, 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 well, you have to be viable to the opposite sex. Just no, it's no different than if a woman calls in saying, hey, Drexel, how do I, how do I, am I viable to, to men? Well, you can't be viable to men if you're sitting around with some insane body count, you're you're loud and obnoxious and you know you're you're fat and stuff cuz most men won't find that attractive. See? It's that sense of entitlement that you're trying to break down cuz that person is sick. You see what I'm saying? So, when you are viable economically, physically, sexually, see, you are now a healthy prospect. You always hear that that term, like you, you think about it in sports when they say, like, oh, this is a healthy prospect. This person has the goods, right? And when you have the goods, you can make investments in your future. So that's why when I, I tell you guys, you know, always like when it's time to invest in your health, you invest in your health even with your friends, right? And the value you place on them and your family. Of course, you know, the positive ones and you know, family members are quick, the quickest ones to ask you for some goddamn money with their hands out. You know, it is what it is. And then, of course, I always tell people on the same token, you divest, right? And you divest from the takers. And you need to do this for your own health. Because so often, I think a lot of people wind up in these toxic relationships that hurts their health. And you think about what hurts your health, right? And if someone says, hey, Tim, what, what has hurt your health throughout your life? If you notice, it was always someone who was taking from you. You ever notice that? They were taking. They're taking up your time. They're taking up your money. They're, they're, they're trying to take your girl. They're, trying, they're always taking. See? Now, I want you guys to think about something. If, you're, if, you, if the topic is health and you're really concerned about the issues uh, pertaining to health, wouldn't you be kind of in, in that mode where you would say to yourself, hey, I want someone that's going to help me build muscle, all right? Because when guys go to the gym, they go, I want to build muscle. Well, a taker is like somebody just like like doping you up and your muscles start to atrophy, right? And saying, hey, man, I'm going to get you bigger tomorrow. I'm going to get you buff. So they're just putting all these false words in, right? Fluff. But then you look at your end result, you're like, damn, dude, it's been two months, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little chubby. No, you're good. And that's where like that body positivity shit comes from, right? They don't want to hold anybody accountable. But it's like, look, man. It's not about looking good because, you know, you want to get laid or any of that stuff. That has nothing to do with it. You're not about looking good. It's about looking good and feeling good for yourself. Both, you know, like, like when you look in the mirror, you want to be happy with what you see for your own uh, self-esteem. But more importantly, 
It's physiological. When I talked earlier about some of these guys, like some of these old rap legends dying young, right? 51 years old and all that kind of stuff. Look at how bad these people are doing, man, with the drugs. I mean, how many how many of us have grown up with uh, certain uh, like celebrities and stuff that we saw or certain people that in our own life that we've known? And how many of how many times have you seen them? They neglected their health, right? That that girl you knew that used to be hot. Where is she now? Oh, man. Yeah, she she blew up, man. She started having kids or man. She she got into drugs. You see a lot of old athletes. You're like, damn, what happened to him? Dude, he, he let, that's why we had that term. He let himself go. Or a woman. She let herself. Raven Simone is big as a fucking house now. The same little cute kid from the Cosby show is now big as a damn house. You know? And, you know, you look at a lot of rock legends who have who have used the drug thing and, and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, it helps with my writing. It's like, dude, it ain't worth it. ain't worth it. You need to figure out a new writing technique if if, you know, using heroin or something helps you you know what i'm saying because it only hurts it hurts everybody around you of course and it's always about the takers when you when you look at any of these people who have ever gone out and they they do interviews and stuff they talk about uh you know uh their relationships right and do you notice it's always somebody in their inner circle that's taking right take 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 it's their manager it's a business partner it's a a uh, girlfriend or, or boyfriend, it's, it's but it's always someone taking. And think about this for a second. If you're talking about your financial health, how can someone taking from you be a good thing, right? So you assess them. It's like getting a physical. You see what I'm saying? When, when you go in for a physical, you want to know what's wrong with me. Is there something I need to correct, right? Is there, okay, what are my levels at? If someone can tell you about your cholesterol, your blood sugar. There's a lot of people out there that's diabetic, man. It's the diet. And you, you look at just the, the way that you need to divest from people who are takers. And you start to think about this, right? It's the mental health too, because I want all you guys out there to think about this for a second. How many times have you been around somebody who they say they're your friend or they're your buddy or whatever? But at the end of the day, do you ever notice they kind of wear on your mental health, right? They make you anxious. They make you tired. They make you angry. And you go, why is that? Because they're taking away your energy. You see what I'm saying? They take away your energy because what is it they're, re- they're usually doing? Hey, man, let's not do shit today. See, lazy people will take away your fucking drive. And then you're going to end up being broke. And then, of course, that leads to other problems, right? Maybe you get kicked out of this place. Maybe you lose this. You lose that. Your life is getting harder for no reason other than you're keeping bad company that is detrimental to your health, your financial health, your mental health. You see what I'm saying? It's detrimental. So you always want to combat that, right? And, you know, there's, there's a million ways to combat it. But, you know, everyone knows the, the first one, right? It's the big E, which is exercise. And there's so many ways to exercise. And like, just like when someone says exercise your options, you have to exercise your options in any uh, form and fashion when it comes to your own future. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when a guy's sitting there looking at, uh, you know, what crypto to uh, to invest in, he can't. He doesn't just dive in without doing a little bit of research. He wants to do a little research. He's looking at things because at the end of the day, he's exercising his options. You got to exercise your muscles. And, you know, most of us have fallen off, unfortunately, um, during the whole lockdown and all that stuff, uh, which is unfortunate because I, I mean, and I'm just as guilty as the next guy. Like, I don't, I'm not my normal self because I've been able to get to the gym the way I like to. And it's one of those things where, you know, I think it's time. For, I think all of us can push each other to like really shape up, right? Because we got to get on the fucking ball, you know? I mean, you, I mean, how you just you're seeing too many people uh, get sick and drop dead for whatever reason, and I don't know. You just you get to a certain point where you should want yourself and the people around you to do better and be healthier. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and you look at this. It's like all of these points. You know, you look at it. it it's, it's to be shared, right? They're all to be shared by your fellow man. You always want to take the, that knowledge. And I always tell people, you always take the knowledge, and this is this goes for everyone within the manosphere, is you have to share it because at the end of the day, 
this is a time of division. Do you guys notice that every time that uh, you know, as soon as as soon as Biden took office, they're trying to hurt the the health of the nation, and someone goes, "Well, Drax, how are they trying to help hurt the health of the nation?" Because every time you turn on your TV, it's some goddamn story about black guy is dead, and there's a or or black female, right? And a white cop did this, or a black identity politics hurts the nation. Because think about what it hurts. When you are constantly being bombarded with misinformation about person A, person B, you know, uh, oh, this, these kinds of people are like this or that. Well, guess what? Before you know it, maybe you're clutching your purse. Maybe you're avoiding somebody, but you're also avoiding opportunities, right? That could be right there. You know, you, you bump into, there are a lot of guys that got started on YouTube and you look at, you look at that, that rise to fame. Uh, Nick said that uh, you know when he first got on YouTube, remember Nick was doing his regular lawyer work, right? And through exercising his options by by getting in with the right people, it helped him grow his channel, and he steadily grew his channel, which is what a lot of I think anybody who goes on YouTube should always be trying to grow your channel, you know. And Coach Greg Adams always said he said when he made his his channel. He said he thought he would, you know, be overwhelmed to hit 10,000 subscribers. He was like, hey, I thought I'd be the man at 10,000. You see, because you, you don't know how much further you can go if you just keep pushing it, keep exercising options, keep doing something new, right? And look at the alternative, right? You look at the alternative to, to exercising your options, what, to just sit and be stagnant? Like, think about how unhealthy that is. You, you, I want you guys to think about every time that you've ever been around somebody who doesn't like actually go out and do shit. They just sit around, right? And then listen, like just like really just uh, like, listen to them. And you'll sit there and you'll find yourself like, like it's almost like, like your soul, like, like your life force is being sucked away. And you're like, oh man, I'm starting to feel weak. You start to feel weak because this person's toxic energy is literally sucking the life out of you. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it's a sad thing, but it's like at the end of the day, you have to always tell people to look, be on the lookout. When I tell you guys about even bitch made simps, right? What is it that I'm, I'm really warning you guys about? I keep telling you guys, these people will steal your glow. Uh, Mr. Leximus talked about, you know, being in the service, things like that. Darth Lightskin talks about some of these guys out here that's so bitch made. Uh, you know, we got guys like Roth who talks about in, in his neck of the woods how things are. The relationships are all, you know, shot to shit, right? And you, this is why it's so damn important to do what? To share this knowledge so that you can make the men around you healthier and the women too. Because if a woman comes to you for genuine advice and she's a genuinely uh, decent person, she's not out there trying to do some chameleon shit, uh, I believe that we do have an obligation to help. You know, like, like we're not talking about chameleons. Like, so if, if a chick comes to you and she's, you know, 38, and she's talking about she wants uh, to land a high value man. I I'm not okay with that because she's basically just trying to do something to 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 get the bag. You see what I'm saying? So she's gonna she's going to increase her health in terms of her financial prospects. But guess what? She's going to ruin someone else doing it. Right? It's gonna be at their expense. So we have to protect brothers from these fucking vultures. Which is why, of course, I always tell you guys, man, turn off the boob tube. TV is doing nothing. Mainstream media is fucking dying, okay? And do you know why they're dying? Because mainstream media is sick. They're sick, twisted, and demented because all they want to do, every single story is, is a form of division. That's it. We're going to divide people somehow. We got to divide them like this. We got to divide them like that. We got to start saying, look at the NBA, right? Why would you ever put Black Lives Matter on the court and kneeling and all this shit? Dude, just, just go out there and play ball, man. Because, see, so here's what's funny, Tim. By trying to appease uh, a, a small margin of a radicals, right, you end up hurting the overall growth health, right, especially financial health, right, of the league and, and, and your, your, your brand, right? So the NBA has done what I, you know, remember, you, you never know the future, but he, I believe to some, to some uh, certain, you know, X amount of people, the NBA has done irreparable damage, and those people won't really tune in again. I just think they're just they're just done. Because remember, Adam Silver is the commissioner. 
he's not going anywhere anytime soon. You see what I'm saying? Like he just got the job after after Stern. So here you are, you sacrifice so much. It's like, but the health, the, the financial viability, the financial health of your league has now tanked over social justice. And that's why when I told you guys, I was like, culture is just as important with, with health as your mental health or your spiritual health. Like if, if someone, if, if you went up to a, uh, a priest or a rabbi or something and you talk to him about faith, he's going to talk about why it's, it's so important to have a healthy faith in God, healthy faith in a higher power, whatever that faith is, right? But imagine if you told him, I want you to actively do something that's going to hurt that. He'd be like, well, why? There's nothing, there's nothing to gain from that. And that's the point. And yet people are buying into this. People are buying into identity politics. Now, obviously, some people are finally starting to tune it out, like the Oscars that completely fucking, uh, it fell on its face, I heard. I heard it didn't even, it didn't even have 10 million uh, viewers. You're having YouTube stars with, with healthier uh, viewing numbers than, you know, a, a mainstream media, you know, mega works production. You know, these people got all kinds of resources to go put out there. And yet at the end of the day, you got guys sitting behind, uh, you know, sitting in front of a camera on YouTube that are more relevant. And what's that telling you? It's telling you that as one thing dies, which is mainstream media, and thank God it's dying, what's becoming healthier? Independent content creators. And why is that important? Because you can improve or make healthier the culture. See? And if the culture gets better, the nation gets better. Because as you guys are starting to see, the uh, the jig is up. Feminism has fallen flat on its face, and you're seeing more and more women talking about going to these uh, these channels for. I gotta learn how to you know be in my inner femininity. Why do you think they're saying that? They're starting to realize. Wait a minute, this shit's a lie. They want to have healthy relationships with men, and you can't do that being a damn Marxist feminist, right? And at the end of the day, and this is why I give Alexa uh, uh, so many shout outs is because. If you're going to go down that path, even though, I, like I said, dating is not for me, but I, I tell guys all the time, if you did find a good thing out there, protect it. You know, you should protect it. You should uh, respect it because that's how rare it is due to the toxic culture. And, you know, it's like, and I think the thing is that it's it's the excuses, I believe, are one of the reasons why we as a nation and as a people haven't gotten healthier. and. At the end of the day, like it's the, it's these excuses for whatever, right? The the reason why a guy doesn't go to the gym is because ah, yeah, I'm tired, but 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 I'm hurt. Ah, uh, yeah, but but there's 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 this reason, there's that reason. The excuses must stop because I looked up some obesity uh, stats, right? And they were troubling, man. I'm not going to lie. Like, like, I knew it was bad, but I was just thinking, like, how bad is bad? So I go and look, and uh, it says, for U.S. adults, right, the U.S. adult obesity rate is 42.4%, right? Now, if you include people who are considered overweight, remember, that's just obese. That's not overweight. Think about this for a second. The national adult obesity rate is 20%, 26% higher since 2008, right? So in just a little over a decade, look at how fast we got that fucking fat and lazy and complacent. You see what I'm saying? And I, I went to go, so I go and check the, the CDC website, right? So in, in, according to the CDC, the prevalence of uh, of of childhood obesity, right, was nineteen point three percent, and affected fourteen point four million children and adolescents. Our kids aren't going outside. Once again, our kids are sick because our culture is sick. Thus, our nation is sick. Go outside and look around, man. Do you see kids playing ball? I was born in the eighties. Kids were out playing. Like this time of year, this where's this is April twenty eighth. Right, you talk about late April, early May. Most places in in, in America, if you ask some, they're like, "Oh yeah, we were out playing ball. We were doing night games. Kids were doing all manner of things." Right now, 
feminism is still in effect, but like it didn't get to this point. It, it wasn't this toxic. Boys and girls still believed in marriage, even though they, you know, maybe you were a latchkey kid. You, you still believed. That was the thing. That, that was the main thing. You believed. This is long before the internet, long before MGTOW, long before a lot of this stuff, right? Red pill stuff. People still had this thing like, Yo, look, man, I want to build something. I want to do this. I want, I want to have a healthy family. Now people are just pulling out. And it's like, there's people out there panicking because they see, uh oh, they're not, they're not sticking to the script, right? And to know that the United States is the fattest nation in the world, right? Just ahead of Mexico, right? You just, you kind of sit back and you go, what are we doing, man? Well, your fast food is amazing. As much as there are people in the chat like to shit on your McDonald's, fucking McDonald's is awesome. I would never say McDonald's is awesome, man. See, it's... I'm the kind of person who would like travel to Italy and find the nearest McDonald's. But, but you know, though, it's at the end of the day, though, we have to watch, uh, we have to watch our kids. And we do have to change those habits. Um, you know, I, I'm guilty of that. I have to, you know, crack down on my daughter with the snacking and stuff. I'm looking at her. I'm like, hey, you're getting pudgy. This is unacceptable. You know, you got to get, get off your ass and, and, and do this, do these uh, exercises with me. Right. And, you know, it's like I said, I mean, the, the, the pandemic has really kind of caused uh, a reset for some. And we kind of, you know, there was a few oversights in other ways, but it's like, we just, everyone has to get healthier, I believe, um, getting back on track. And, you know, you're talking about food. Listen, we can all afford to do better with the whole, you know, what we ingest, right? Our food intake. And that includes myself because, you know, e even just going in uh, with, with the whole, the whole, you know, bug bite incident uh, that got infected. Um, she, the, the doctor actually, or the nurse took, took my uh, blood pressure and said like, Oh, it's a little high. Now, given it could have been because I was I was taking a bunch of meds because I thought I was uh, it was allergies. But it doesn't matter what the cause was. The fact that she said your blood pressure seems a little high. That's all I needed to say. Okay, look, I need to really you know get back on track with you know low blood because I I've had low blood pressure. And I said, look, man, I gotta get back on track. The the you know all the the, the garbage food needs to stop. It has to get greatly reduced. You know. The salt has to get reduced. Like, there's a reason why, you know, when, when guys like Alec Jones are going, you know, stop putting the chemicals in the water that turns the frogs gay. What we ingest matters, though, right? And it's not just food. Like, think about what, you know, ingestion means, right? We ingest a lot of things. We ingest ideologies, right? You think about, like, what are, you, what are your values? What are your principles? You ingested that. You took it in, right? It's something you took in it's like, like a sponge. You sat there. You, you, you took it in. You chopped it up. You said to yourself, okay, is this something that, you know, benefits me? It's the same. Like, you think about what, what philosophy is, right? You're always questioning things. Well, you've, you've, you've ingested it. You've ingested something that, that was told to you, whether it be religion, whether, you know, even a, a workplace manual, right? And how to, con you know, workplace, uh, how to conduct yourself and blah, blah, blah. You start looking at things going, okay, is this the best way that we can maximize what we're doing, right? Can I maximize myself as an employee or an employer, right? And, you know, especially for relationships, uh, I feel the same way, right? And here we are, and this includes romantic relationships uh, or otherwise, of course. We have to start ingesting good relationships, right? Good relationships with people who actually give a damn about you so that that way you can have more healthy relationships. And like, I want you guys to think about this for a second. Do you ever notice people who are in really great relationships only want to be around people who are also in good relationships? Because I'm sure at some point, everyone who's listening to this has, uh, has, has been around somebody who was in a toxic relationship, right? And it felt uncomfortable. And there, like, like that, that unhealthy vibe, that, that toxic vibe, it just makes you kind of be like, damn, man, like you guys can just leave that alone. Like you couldn't just stay at home because at the end of the day, it's going to hurt what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is go out and have a good time with your girl or, or your, your guy, whatever, you know, what side of the fence you're on. 
and imagine what it's like to have somebody sitting in there hurting what you're trying to do, right? They're taking, right? You know, like I always tell you guys, either someone is a fucking asset or they're a liability. There is no in between. Very few people you're ever going to encounter in your life that are just neutral. In some way, they're probably going to help you or some way, they're probably going to hurt you. Usually that's one or the other. So these things matter. And, you know, I just want to let people know, you know, like, it's up to us to have a better life. And it's up to us to have a better lifestyle, right? In our diet and spreading this word. Um, Because, you know, I I know people who are in the health field. And I think that's something that we all need to take a, a little look at in terms of body work, right? Whether it be massage, whether it be, you know, chiropractic work. Whether it be, hey, look, man, your your goal is to get in the gym. Some days when you don't feel like getting in the gym, I don't give a damn if you have a ring fit adventurer on your switch. Like just getting out there and really doing something. And I think all of that, it, it really does do something because it's infectious. No different than feminism is infectious. I want you guys to imagine what would happen if more and more people started working out, right? You know, like I told you guys, the, the rate is at 42.4%. What if it dropped down to like 30%? If it drops, that means more people are doing something that is the opposite behavior, right? So rather than getting obese, they start going and working out and maybe taking a walk. They start doing calisthenics. They just go out in the park. It's infectious. People start seeing you do that shit. They go, oh, damn, man. I've seen that guy. He's he's looking good. He's starting to lose weight. You, You guys have known this. Anyone who's ever been like in an office environment, when they see someone starting to lose weight and looking good, you know what happens? They want to join in. Like, they want to feel that joy. They go, damn, man, I, I kind of want to, I've been thinking about getting a way to, to, to work out and get in. You know, what, what, what tips can you give me? And that's why I always go back to you guys and I tell you, it's so important to lean on other people, right? And at, at the end of the day, like, if you need to, you know, sometimes you need to be held up. Sometimes you need to hold somebody else up because you think about just the way your health goes. And, you know, whether it be even if, whether it's an injury or you're, you're fully healthy, usually there's something that you can always do that's more, something that you can do more and do better. And that's basically what I got for you guys. I just want to really touch on that because, like I said, it was, it was something with, uh, with the whole incident with where I'm, you know, gushing out of my, my jawline and, and all that and seeing, you know, seeing people decay, seeing people die and it happens so fast that it's just like, damn, man, we we really got to do better. Because I, like I said, I, I see the kids, especially what what the kids are eating. Um, you know, because the kids are the future, and that's why when I when I brought up China earlier to tie things back up, is China sees a problem. I see a problem. I hope all of you guys see a problem that it is it's entirely within our our uh, power to solve. Which is, hey, man, health is something that you you have complete control over. What you eat, what you put into your body, uh, do you choose to to you know engage in risky behavior, whether it be smoking, drinking, drugs, whatever? These are all things that we have total autonomy over, right? So it's like if we have that autonomy, at least let's make it where we go. Hey, look, man. Yes, I could you know die in a car accident. Yes, I could die any which way. But at least I would rather have something completely unforeseen take my life than it being me just habitually doing something that I know is going to harm me, harm my overall health. So, yeah, just like I said, keep going out there, keep grinding. Um, just just keep fighting it, man. Like, like whatever whatever vices you have, um, whatever, if you, like I said, if you're a little lazy or whatever, it's like, it's just like time. Like, you don't, like, and you don't need a New Year's resolution shit, man. Because like I said, I, I'm seeing too much over this pandemic. Uh, I'm sure for those of you guys who have, who have remained working or maybe you guys have, who took a break, especially those who took a break. How many of you guys who, who took a break over the past year came back to work and started noticing there are certain people that you hadn't seen in a long time and they became fat fuckers? And you're like, oh, shit. They're, 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 you know, the dudes are getting a little tubby. Well, I mean, hey, they, they, all it was is they just they neglected their health, right? And, and especially in, in white-collar settings, right, office settings and stuff, you'll see it a lot. And I've noticed it too. Like I've noticed, I'm telling you, like a lot of people, man. I'm talking when I say a gut, I'm talking about a full on, like you know, not just spare tire, like a, a fucking monster truck tire. And it's like, god damn, like, like bro, like what have you been doing for the past eight months? 
hey, I, they just they neglected it. And it's like, listen, it's not about, you know, putting people down and nothing like that. It's just about, yo, let's just do a full on reset and get this shit back in order, man. So that's what I got for you guys. And I hope you guys are uh, doing well and, and all that fun stuff. And again, thanks for the 5,000 subs. I really do appreciate it. And we're always trying to come up with all new shit to tell you guys. And uh, don't forget to look out for uh, this upcoming weekend. We're doing a show with our man, uh, Dollhouse Phil, and a huge, huge um, influence on me uh, in the YouTube space and in the Manosphere, uh, RPM. This guy is an absolute legend, man. And, and if you don't know about his HMT, which is the Hockey Mass uh, Time series, this guy is great, man. You, you guys are really going to like it. Um, he, he's just somebody who just brings a lot of, uh, charisma, a lot of passion and just because he's lived it. He's, he's a guy who's, uh, you know, been in the service. He'll obviously, uh, we do the show. He will, you know, introduce himself and kind of give guys out there just kind of like a little, little background on how it is. And of course, you know, Phil is Phil who we've had on plenty of times. The unofficial co-host. Yeah. The unofficial co-host because I mean, man, it's, it's getting to that kind of time of year. You know, there's some things that are opening back up. And I think that uh, that's going to be the biggest test of people's uh, health going forward is just how they're going to navigate going back into a world that can, starts to open up because a lot of people have just been stuck inside. I mean, you, you think about how many people have been stuck inside, man. Like, depending on where you live, I mean, when we, we every time we check in with Phil, he's like, yep, everything's still locked down. Like, damn, still? You know, and yet there's people other places like, yeah, everything's it started to open up or we were fairly open or some people were just like, yo, man, nothing changed. Right. Like if you live in Florida, nothing changed. So, yeah, man, just just stay safe out there and and, and definitely, um, yeah, yeah, enjoy all of this to the fullest, man, because you, you're, you're healthy. You're only going to get it once. You know, the, the, re, the you know, what you invest in your body, you know, rather than than all the McDonald's and all the, the, the junk food shit, maybe be like, yo, look, man. I'm going to start using this to at least, you know, eat. I'm going to, you know, know, use the cheat day the opposite way. Like I'm going to have the two cheat days or something in terms of I'm going to eat all, you know, healthy, clean shit or something, something like that, just to see if it it changes your mood, changes how you feel. A lot of times it does. It changes, you know, you can walk up flights of stairs, all stuff. And as you, you know, feel better, you look better, you just want more of it. You're going to crave it as opposed to craving something that, like, you know, you guys saw the movie Super Size Me. Well, damn. I mean, he he looked miserable, you know? So definitely uh, get on that, man. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed this episode in regards to everything regarding health. Oh, uh, just a quick programming note. Uh, This episode will come out Friday morning. The stream with RPM and Dollhouse Phil will be Friday evening. So you'll be hearing about it on this episode and have just enough time to go over there and make sure that you have your space reserved. Uh, we will be dual casting to MGTOW.TV and YouTube, so you can use your preferred platform in addition to your preferred pronouns. <laughs> that was slick. Because, uh, we gotta, speaking of which, uh, we still have to do the 5,000, uh, subscriber special. We owe that to the fans. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So the RPM stream will not be a call-in, uh, stream. I have enough on my hands dealing with Phil and RPM and both of us. Yeah. Uh, Phil has agreed to come on for the call-in stream, which we'll figure out sometime probably in the middle of May. That's good. These live streams tend to knock me out for a couple of days. They're so stressful. Yeah, imagine that. Yes, I finally figured out MGTOW.TV's live stream stuff. I was actually talking to the owner of the website. Uh, so we did a couple of tests. Um... We have our own dedicated streaming server, just like TFM does. Hmm. Um, we just need to get Drex a better computer. That's literally the only thing we're missing. And we could do live streams, like, every week. I can do it. I can do it. So, but those who don't like YouTube or Susan, don't worry. We're, you know, we're still going to go deal with Susan. But if you don't want to support Susan, you can also watch us at MakeTow.tv. Uh, just search for the MakeTown podcast there. I always post links to our alternative media platforms mm-hmm. in the description of every episode. So if you guys want to check that out, just uh, expand out the uh, expand out the description of this episode, 
and you'll see our Parlor account. Um, I think someone set up an Odyssey account for us too, oh. which is cool. I have no idea how Odyssey works. I'll have to figure that out in my spare time. Also, the links to just download the audio. You know, if you ever want to listen to us on a long road trip, you can download the audio-only versions of these podcasts at MGTOWN.LIBSON.COM. Uh, we just released bonus episode 5, featuring the infamous failed Easter gangbang story. So a quick plug of our... No, no, that wasn't a gangbang, though. That was a... Uh, I don't know what I call that. I call Well, it that was a, Miss uh... Failed Gangbang, right? Oh, yeah, 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 the person, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah Miss, Miss Laura shows up to uh, to help detail a story of uh, epic fuckery. And I naked drops. push-ups. Yeah, naked push-ups. Yeah, they, yeah that, that was like a mini, because since it was it was so, like, impromptu, like, oh, I'm leaving, and uh, I want to do something next weekend. You're like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> okay, I, I guess I got five days to prepare. Good, great, so... <laughs> but anyways, if you want to hear the full story, you need to become a member of the Patreon or subscribe star or both. Again, I don't stop anyone who subscribes to both. I don't know why you would. Otherwise, uh, let's dip into the email bag because we started a war the last time we were in the email bag. Did we? Oh, we did we ever. Do you remember the guy whose buddy was... Uh, doing erotic role playing with trans, uh, with trannies uh, on image websites. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so the buddy emailed in. Oh, oh shit! It was he hot? Well, about what? First of all, he opens with the line, "I don't listen to your sour grapes incel show." Great opening line. I like it. Is, is you know you know you know it's cute. I think it's cute when when people think incel is gonna hurt somebody, right? Yeah. When they're like, you incel, it's like, sure, <laughs> all right. And apparent. Okay, so the first paragraph is so Buddy has cc'd the original emailer and all of our addresses. So there's three of them. So I got three copies of this email. It's perfect. Oh, nice. The first paragraph is just kind of aiming at his buddy, uh, mm-hmm. saying he doesn't have a soul, and that he's breaking off any business venture. First of all, how did this dude find out, then? Uh, apparently a buddy sent him the clip from episode 20. Mm, I see. Um, and then he addresses us using uh, two slurs that I cannot repeat. That's cute. But first of all, I'm not Jewish, and I don't know where you got that idea from. Dumb. He also says, I can't believe you read my username on your show. Uh, It's your username. I don't read real names. I just read aliases and usernames. Right. What do you mean, I can't believe you read my username on the show? Are you that much embarrassed about what you got caught doing? Right. Anyways, he goes to rationalize. There are plenty of females on Rule 34. Okay, I did not know it was Rule 34 before. (laughs) <laughs> I do now. Now I've actually been to Rule Thirty Four a couple of times. It's really funny. This dude sounds real sensitive, but go ahead. He claims that women have visual turn-ons too. You can tell by the way they talk, and some girls are really kinky despite being virgins. Uh, just because, and I think that's actually that guy's real name, so I'm not going to say it. Um, but our first emailer is bitter that no one will ever want to sleep with a soulless block of ice like him doesn't mean he has to try and dunk on people in public like this. Uh, He claims to have only dated one trans woman, and she was an aberration. Most trans women are far more honest than she was. (laughs) Uh, You won't be laughing when he has his own personal sex slave, uh, while original emailer is all alone. Wait, is he trying to, like, is he trying to fuel jealousy? I don't know. <laughs> he seems re- he seems really angry. So I'm pretty sure that whoever sent him the clip from episode 20 will also send him this clip. Yep. So I've got some advice for you, buddy. Uh, first of all, it sounds like you're trying to convince yourself that what you do you're doing is within the realm of normal. All right. Any relationship that you maintain online through a web forum is not a real relationship. So if you think you can dunk on someone by saying, well, they're not all bad, and I think some of them are women. First of all, there are no such thing as women on the internet. All right? (laughs) Men are men. All women are men. 
and all children are FBI agents. You should know this. You're on Rule 34. You know the rules of the internet. Yeah, if you if you think that calling... First of all, if you think that calling us uh, slur words is going to get to us, um, I don't know where you got in your head that I'm Jewish. I don't know if I've... My nose is not nearly big enough, first of all. This guy isn't a regular listening, listener to the show, though. So I don't know if he even knows who Nick is. Probably not. And Nick's not Jewish either. Like, I, I get it. I get how you could easily confuse that, but how the hell would you arrive at that conclusion without just making a baseless and retarded assumption? <laughs> there, goes, there, goes the, uh, there goes somebody who could be a caller. This guy. Um, oh, if he calls into the show, that'd be great. So, dude, try harder. That's all I can say. But you know what? All the best to you. I hope you find happiness, whatever form it takes. And if other people's misery is what makes you happy, then perhaps you should book a session with Ken Jennings. <laughs> we'll see if he we'll see if he emails back. Yeah, that's something else. Another email I got in was uh, an opinion on people on Twitter blackwashing light skinned characters. Oh, is that and a thing? saying that they're fixing the art? Oh, uh, see, it always has to be that extra, right? Yeah. As a general rule of thumb, uh, whatever a character was originally intended, uh, I prefer to leave the character as is. Uh, that's just my own thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why they're always trying to like whitewash a character or blackwash a character or change the ethnicity or change the gender. Look, man, the character is the character. I mean, that's all I got for the email bag. Man, that war between uh, those two guys. It's going to be so funny. Oh, wow. So he, he spent three months listening to old streams. Yeah, I always love going on streams and Nick and I get to chill and talk about random shit and endure people like, uh, what was that fucking crazy bra's name? Uh, oh, Cindy, what the hell's her name? Schuler. Schuler, yeah, whatever that crazy broad, like Gail Schuler. Yeah, oh, Gail, that was, Gail, I, oh, everyone keeps begging Nick to show you more of her stuff. Oh, that broad man. I oh. might be able to show, um, you know, when we go on with live with uh, Phil and RPM, I might be able to show that. I'll have to figure it out. Hmm. But I might be able to show that to everyone, and we could just react to it. God, that's such a. I have listened to that. Uh, chimp out at Popeye's story. I don't know, like a dozen times now. I just keep going back and watching it and giving her more views because it's it's the kind of story that you can put in the background and you're paying attention to and you know what she's going to say next and it still surprises you. Of course. Because that broad's actually batshit crazy. Like she throws out the fucking Edward, man. Like the whitest woman you could possibly well, she's think reading of. Reading it technically, um, but but yeah, I mean the, the chick is crazy though. I mean like, well, obviously she's quoting she's quoting a um, a line from Brent Spiner. Brent Spiner, I mean, allegedly. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know that about Brent Spiner. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm sure. Hanging like, out with Hugh Jackman and yeah, it's, Terrence it, 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 Jenkins. It's so absurd. It, 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 it shit was so, so that, and that's why, and that's why if you notice, like, no legal action can get taken um, against someone like that because, because like, think about it, you, they would, this person would show up, they, they would look at the video, and be like, well, are you serious? Like, this person's clearly deranged. Like, you can't, you can't hit them for like a slander case. Like, they're, they're crazy. God damn it! If uh, fucking if Nick would answer for once in his life a fucking DM, I've been telling Nick email Ty Beard and CC me. Ty just sent me a text. Tell him to get onto the show. Like I'll I'll do every I can bend my will around uh Ty's technological incompetence. <laughs> like like we did with TFM, right? Because TFM got yeeted off Discord, so we couldn't yep. use Discord to record them. I know it wasn't the perfect setup, and the more times I get to try it, the more times it, it'll get or the more it gets better. Um, cause I remember trying to pipe it through in here. It would constantly cut in and out. That's because I had the recording was, um, 
yeah, uh, the recording with TFM took higher precedence than the clarity of the audio coming back into you guys for very obvious reasons. I also have to edit in both the intro and outro songs. Uh, people love Brawley's outro song, by the way. Mm. So shout out to Brawley. Love, uh, we love the outro song. I can do it. Yeah, I, I was going to let him know. I, I'm definitely going to get Mama Vic on. Uh, well, I, I'm going to get her on in the, once we hit summer. Because she told me to come and um, she she definitely uh, do something. But she said, said the, the way the weather is, we're in her neck of the woods. What's that? Phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the way that you be, uh, you be nice to Mama Vic there. <laughs> yeah, the, the way that uh, the weather is in her neck of the woods. Yeah, it's the mosquito season's coming up. Uh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> uh, there's still man. I was out in the mountains today. There's still a ton of snow out there. A metric fuck ton of snow out in the mountain slopes. I love Canada so much. Only in Canada could you hop into your car at the start of May. And pack your snowsuit and a pair of snowshoes. Hmm. Hey, um, if t- if you're in contact with Ty, see if he wants to do a show. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, he literally just texted me. I uh, saw his message come through at twelve oh six, an hour and a half ago. So I'll definitely uh, reach out to Mister Beard himself. Um, yeah, be careful with the mosquitoes. You don't want to turn into Lemoyne. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit, that's hilarious. If he's up at this... Yeah, but I don't know if Ty has a Discord account. Uh, no, I don't think Ty, he does. I'm assuming not. No, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I'm sure his daughters could set one up for him, but then he'd never use it. He'd forget the login. He has to put it on the fridge. All, yeah. all, all information has to go on the fridge. By the way, um, Miss j really wants to meet up with Figbat. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Because... I don't even remember. Oh, no, 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 I remember. I happened to just be watching the general chat randomly, and Miss Jayla was there talking with people, and uh, Phil came up, and she's like, oh, I really got the hots for, like, British accents. And I'm like, wait a second. Do you like your British chocolate? (laughs) And I'm like, Figbat, get in here. (laughs) (laughs) But thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next week. Peace to everybody out there. We'll see you next time. Stay frosty.